Welcome back to part 2 of this mini-series, Let's Make and Solve a Rubik's Cube in Unity. In the last episode, we built our cube and set up the scene. In this episode, we'll add the ability to rotate the cube so our players can have a good look around it. We're going to be picking up right where we left off, so if you missed the previous episode, I would recommend checking that out first. We need to be able to have a look around our cube to see all the different sides. Selecting the cube in the hierarchy, we can use the inspector to add a new component. I'm calling this script Rotate Big Cube as that is exactly what it will do. The movement I'm after is that the player should be able to right click the cube and flick it into the next position, like swiping on a phone, so let's get that set up now. We need to keep track of some variables, so let's add a Vector2 first press pause for the position the swipe started, Vector2 second press pause for the position the swipe ended, and Vector2 current swipe to look after the direction of the swipe. To handle the swipe, we need a new method, void swipe. If the right mouse button is clicked, if input.getMouseButton down 1, get the 2D position of the first mouse click. First press pause equals new vector 2 input.mouseposition.x input.mouseposition.y. For now, we'll just print that out to the console. Print first press pause. Then, in the update method, we can call the swipe method so that it runs once per frame. Hitting play, we can see that if we right click in our scene, the coordinates turn up in the console. We need to determine what type of swipe has occurred so that we can rotate the cube appropriately based on the input. We can do this with some booleans. Create a new bool, left swipe, and that's going to take in the swipe that just happened, vector2 swipe. We can then return true or false if it was a left swipe or not. Return current swipe.x is less than zero. This is true if the swipe is moving in the negative x or left direction. And current swipe.y is greater than negative 0.5 float, and current swipe.y is less than 0.5 float. This is true if it has not traveled up or down much. We can also do this in the opposite x direction for a right swipe. Bool right swipe, vector2 swipe. Return current swipe.x is greater than zero, and current swipe.y is greater than negative 0.5 float, and current swipe.y is less than 0.5 float. Now we can build the swipe by comparing the point where the right mouse button was clicked to the point where it was released. If input.getMouseButton up 1, if the right mouse button was released, get the 2D position of the second mouse click. Second press pause equals new vector2 input.mouseposition.x and input.mouseposition.y. Then we create a vector from the first and second click positions. Current swipe equals new vector2 second press pause.x minus first press pause.x second press pause dot y minus first press pause dot y. And then we can normalize the 2D vector. Current swipe dot normalize. Now that we have built our swipe, we need something to rotate. A new public game object, target. Over in Unity, we can drag our cube into the new target slot in the rotate big cube script. If the current swipe is a left swipe, we need to rotate the target by 90 degrees around the y axis. If left swipe current swipe, target dot transform dot rotate, 0, 90, 0, and that's in space.world, else if right swipe, current swipe. If the current swipe is a right swipe, we can rotate by negative 90 in the y axis. Target.transform.rotate, 0, negative 90, 0, in space.world. We don't need this print statement anymore. Over in the editor, we can hit play and see that rotating the cube left and right does work, but it turns instantly, which isn't exactly the behavior that I'm looking for. Instead of instantly rotating the cube, we can rotate something else and then transition the rotation of the cube over time until it matches that rotation. We can create a new game object, reset the transform, name it target, and set it as a child of the cube holder game object. Then replace the cube in the target slot of the rotate big cube script with the newly created target game object. Now when we swipe, we want to automatically move to the target position. So if the current rotation of the game object this script is attached to, the cube, is not equal to the target's rotation if transform.rotation is not equal to target.transform.rotation, create an amount to move by, var step equals speed times time dot delta time, and move by that amount from the cube's current rotation towards the target's rotation. Transform.rotation equals quaternion.rotate towards transform.rotation target.transform.rotation step. The speed variable can be set here in case we want to change it. Float speed equals 200 float. Now, if we play our scene and swipe left or right, the cube automatically moves towards that rotation. 
Of course, we don't only want to move left and right. We should be allowed to rotate the front or right faces up and down as well. Bool up left swipe, vector2 swipe. Returns true if the current swipe dot y is greater than zero and the current swipe dot x is less than zero float. Bool up right swipe, vector2 swipe. Returns true if the current swipe dot y is greater than zero and the current swipe dot x is also greater than zero. Bool down left swipe, vector2 swipe, returns true if the current swipe dot y is less than zero and the current swipe dot x is also less than zero float. Bool down right swipe, vector2 swipe, now that returns true if the current swipe dot y is less than zero and the current swipe dot x is greater than zero. Now that we have our booleans, we need to add the logic into our swipe method. Else if, up left swipe, current swipe, target.transform.rotate 90, 0, 0, space dot world. Else if up right swipe, current swipe, target.transform.rotate 0, 0, negative 90, space dot world. Else if down left swipe, current swipe, target.transform.rotate 0, 0, 90, space dot world. Else if down right swipe, current swipe, target.transform.rotate negative 90, 0, 0, space dot world. Hitting play in the editor, we are now free to swipe the cube in any direction. It would also be cool if there was some visual feedback when we grab the cube so it starts moving again as soon as we begin to drag it. To do this we need to look after a couple more variables. Vector3, previous mouse position, and Vector3 mouse delta, the difference between the current and previous mouse positions. Then we can create a new drag method to handle this. Void drag. If the right mouse button is being held down, if input.getMouseButton1, while the mouse is held down, the cube can be moved around its central axis to provide visual feedback. Mouse delta equals input.mouseposition minus the previous mouse position. As we may need to slow this down a bit, I'm going to multiply the mouse delta by one float for the time being so it doesn't do anything, but we have the option to change it later for a reduction of rotation speed. The cube's rotation is then updated based on the amount the mouse has moved. Transform.rotation equals quaternion.ula mouse delta dot y minus mouse delta dot x, zero, multiplied by the transform.rotation. Else, when the right mouse button is not being pressed down, we rotate towards the target. Then set the previous mouse position to equal input.mouseposition. The automatic rotation can then be placed inside this conditional and the drag method called from inside the update method. Testing this out, it sort of works, but the rotation speed of the drag is too fast, making the cube very difficult to control. This is an easy fix. We can change this from a 1 to a 0.1 float. Back in the editor, and you can see that this controls much better. Grabbing and rotating the cube feels very natural, and we're ready to move on to the next feature. That's it for part 2. In the next episode, we'll add a cube map and cast our first raycast at the cube to start reading the faces. If you're enjoying this series, then please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode.